Can you guess where we are? We're in the glorious Peak District. Lockdown finally finished. And the stay at home rule ended. So I shot off out. But it was a late start because I had to wait for this tent to arrive, which is a new tent. It's a Van Gogh Force 10 MTN2, I think, as class does. And uh, that came late. It came about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So it takes me two hours to get here. So uh, I didn't get here until about half past three. And then I had to shoot off up here on, on Fairbrook Nays on Kinder Scout. It is half past seven. I've got my mountain house beef stroganoff with noodles, which sounds good because you can hardly get these mountain house meals now in the UK. Got a nice cup of coffee there. And the sun as such is gone. Too much cloud. It was really warm when we set off on the hike. But when we got up here, it kind of hazed over and cooled down a hell of a lot so I'm saying it was about 17 18 when we set off and it was about 13 14 by the time we got up here so first real wild camp as such in about I'm guessing four or five months that's only a guess um so I couldn't wait to get out and favorite nays I didn't have the time I would have liked to push on to bleak low but I just don't have the time. I couldn't film on the way up very much. I've been using a, a Panasonic GH5 to do some video. So we'll see how that comes out. But at the moment I'm still on the iPhone. It was just rush, rush, rush. Dogs are tired. We're not used to it. I've got to be honest, we, both, we all done well. Even Stella with her age. But it's the same, yeah, I shot off up to Fairbrook Nays because I know the spot. So it was quick, easy, and there's no one about, not a soul about. I was surprised because with the weather, I thought that this is the first real warm weather we've had. But there's a twist to the tail. Oh, I just said no one's about and there's someone running on the top there. Fell runner. You won't see him, I don't think. He's coming this way. So, oh no, is he going the other way? No, he's going away, I think. Anyway. Uh, where was I? I've lost tra train of thought there. I'm just watching the foul runner. So, yeah, it was just shoot out, get out, and, you know, get some fresh air. And as I say, there was no one about until this foul runner. Now he is coming this way. He's running. But anyway, yeah, we all done well don't think any of us suffered really after about so many months you know we've been doing eight and nine miles normally but um yeah i think we've done really really well i wore boots i asked a few people what it's like up here and they said lovely and dry but i chose to wear boots and thank god i did all the black mud is about ankle deep and you can't get around it because otherwise you'd be uh gruff jumping so sometimes you had to go for it. But, uh, oh yeah, that was it, train of thought. Going back to, yeah, it's been warm today and this is the first warm weather we've had, but there's a twist to the tail. Tomorrow it's going to be about 13, 14, and then tomorrow night, I want to stay out a second night. Tomorrow night, the temperature is going to drop to below freezing and with a wind, wind chill effect of a minus five. So they're saying. So we'll see how that goes. As I say, I'm just waiting one more minute for my dinner. Beef stroganoff and noodles. Sounds good, doesn't it? Then I've got cake for my normal fruit cake. I always have some cake and coffee when I'm up here. So, yeah, haven't been able to take many photos. It's been rush, rush, rush. And I'll show you the tent in the morning. I'll tell you why. I've got this tent. I used to have a heliberg. This is a, a second tent because it's had some marks on it. Look. I don't know where it's been stored somewhere. It's had some marks. That's all. Some dirt. I bet I can wash that off. And this Force 10 MTN2 or whatever it is, the Van Gogh, um, normally sells for about 500. Maybe if you're lucky, you're getting 400 and something pounds. I got this for 200 pounds. <laughs> so, 
It's got sealed um, storm flaps and everything. It's got everything. So, see how it goes. I hope I set it up right. I just waited for the delivery man came. Unpacked it, checked it, make sure everything looked all right. Repacked it, chucked it in the rucksack, which is new. I thought I'd test this one out before I go. This is an Osprey Rook 65. I'm not normally keeping Osprey packs because they're too heavy and all that. But I, I saw that they'd done this. I mean, this pack's been out a year, but I've somehow missed it. But uh, I thought I'd give it a go. And I must admit, I'm really impressed with it. I'll give you a rundown tomorrow about that. But uh, for now, I've got to love you and leave you. I'm going to have some mud. Uh, have some dinner. Beef strong enough. And noodles, here we come. Hope it's good. Right, see you later or see you in the morning. Probably looks lighter on the video. And I'm sorry about the wind noise. It's really gusty up here. It's quarter to eight and sunset's about now, they say. 19.43. Yep, sun's gone. The wind always picks up, doesn't it, as the sun sets. Haven't seen anyone since I fell running, he's gone. If we get dark since so I hope he knows where he's going. Rebel seems like. Oh, there's someone else walking. Rebel? Yep. Hiker. Hope he ain't lost. If you see him. There he is. I've had one last today. Going down there. Uh, Sandy Hayes, the slope at Sandy Hayes, and he said, is this the way to Glossop? <laughs> I said, uh, no. Sorry, I bet you're not hearing any of this. I can't scoop out the way. dark getting cold as well that looks good blowing a good one over the tops there but we're not getting it because of that bank the shelter is great spot I'm no rush to uh, pack away We're on the northern side where a few people come along here at this time of the morning and even if they do they'll be running along that trail we're hidden down there you can see us that's why we were good with the wind last night and the wind's I wouldn't say strong but it's there to let you know Looks better. Need coffee to start the day. I forgot to add, uh, it was only sunrise about 20 minutes, 25 minutes ago at uh, 6.49 or 6.39. So I missed the sunrise. As such. Lie down you two. Lie down. Plenty of room in this tent. Look at it. I'm just flattened mine. It deared it or whatever. Mm. Having something to eat. Cup of coffee, warm up, wait for the sun to come out because it's chilly. And there's no urge to dive outside because once I'm outside this tent there's a strong breeze and it's nippy. It's going to get colder tomorrow. So uh, breakfast as I say no rush.
Not many people will be about at this time in the morning. Not over here. It takes about a couple hours to get here anyway, so even the early risers won't get here to about half past eight, quarter to nine. At the earliest. If old runners, they'll be running by, they won't even notice. That's why I like the northern side, it's so remote. Now, if I was on the southern side, I'd have to get out now. Because there'd be too many people that all the locals go up and have a little walk along the top with the dogs or whatever. Same when you go in Bleaklow. If you're in certain parts of Bleaklow, you can just disappear there for a couple of hours in the morning and there's no urgency to dive out. Evening was, uh, the night was good. Tent stood up lovely and we did have some strong breezes last night. They were predicting 28, 29 mile per hour winds and I'd say... You're not far off. And there's no condensation at all, and yet the ground is quite damp. It's damp everywhere around here at the moment. So, uh, love the tent. See, you can see the stains. That's why it went cheap. There's a couple there. It's probably been, uh, I'm guessing, it was dismantled and left lying around in a store or something and, and someone's trod on it or it's just got some kind of mark I don't know what it is it could even be a return someone's used it didn't like the tent for some stupid reason and returned it but for a tent that should be going about £500 if you're lucky you can get them 400 and something if you're very lucky on eBay you might get them for about I don't know 300 Oh, I got it for two. And not a drop of condensation. And as I say, it hardly budged last night. And, you know, some tents, I think all tents flap or rattle or make some kind of noise. This was really, really quiet. All you heard is the wind going over the top again. I'm still keeping my hibisco shape, the Fowl Raven hibisco shape too. That's my summer tent. But I just wanted another tent that wasn't too expensive. I had a Hilleberg Steiker, which is about a thousand pound worth of tent. And when you've got dogs in it and they've got claws and they bump into poles and things like that, it's just too dangerous. You know, they damage it and then the cost to repair it is just unbelievable. Plus, the Steiker weighs about 10 pounds when you put a footprint or tie that sheet at the bottom. Whereas this one's seven, I know it's only, it's, it's don't sound much, but three pounds is three pounds when it's in your pack. Plus three pounds and 1,000 pounds between 1,000 and 2,000 is a big deal. Lie down, Stella. She's after some of my breakfast biscuit. You're a pig, Stella. Right. I'll show you a couple other bits. I've got a new sleeping bag as well. Um... I've got my quilts and I love my quilts. But again, in the winter, you always need something to kind of enclose yourself in. And I had a Marmot um, 15 degree bag, but it was old. It was wearing and I was getting some code spots. So I got a Marmot um, phase 20 bag, which is very much similar to it. And it, uh, the quilts, it's very, very fine and very thin. And you'd think there's nothing to it. But I put it on, uh, got in it last night, and I'll tell you what, it was beautiful, lovely and toasty. So I'll show you that later before I pack it up. Right, going to have my breakfast. So it's just about to come out, and once that comes out, it'll just warm the temperatures a little bit and burn off some of that cloud. I don't expect it to be really hot today, but it'd be, I, I'm expecting it to be warm when that comes through. Right, finish my brekkie. <laughs> Big nose. Instead, has got a corner. She likes her corner. She was all right last night. You know, she was not happy. She'd start moving about and moaning, like she's doing now, because she wants some breakfast. She's had her breakfast. I got up at four o'clock in the morning to feed these. It was pitch black and it was freezing. But. Um, that's what time now you get fed. I'm sorry. That's what I do at home because they want it. And it all started because Stella used to uh, live in the stables before I rescued her. 
and the owner used to get up and feed the horses at that time so I've been stuck with it but I've got to fish my brekkie Beautiful. Dogs on alert. You'll never get spot. There's another wild camper only feet away from us. <laughs> he must have got in late last night. Because we came through that great spot where he is pitched. We came through that last night about Oh dear, what was that? Sixes? And there was no one there then. So he must have come in late. So we had a wild camper within two, three hundred yards of us, and we never even knew. Unbelievable. <laughs> Couldn't make that up, could you? <laughs> I don't want to go and bother him because he might like his own space. Stella, get here. Yeah. Right, just showing you the before I pack up, start bagging up. My mum at phase 20 sleeping bag. And brand new again, very, very thin. You'd feel there's nothing to it. Only weighs 1.7 pounds. Its comfort is minus 1.4, its limit minus 7.5. Don't forget, think about the extreme. That would be an emergency situation. They say it's water resistant as well, but I wouldn't like to test it on that. I think it means like a little splash. Um, and it's 850 fill. That's the same, 1.7 pounds for this. In weight, I mean. That's what we all think about, isn't it? It's weight. Um, my quilts are normally about 1.4, 1.5. So it's not far off, and I tell you what, I was really warm in that. I had to unzip it. That's the only problem in this bag, and I think it's the same with a lot of bags. The zip is terrible. It keeps snagging. But there will be a technique to get around that. Monsters are making a mess in their tent on their beds. That's their beds, so I don't care. I'll have to live with it tonight. Right, let's start bagging up. That guy's moved out, I think, or moving out. And the sun's going again. Oh, a bit of cloud, that's all. Right, you're out. Stay out, you take. I'm going to start bagging up now. And don't get in trouble, especially with any other hikers. Right. All going back to the tent. Don't know if you saw it much yesterday. That's another thing I like. I mean, I shortened the guy out because the dogs always keep snagging them. Again, with a thousand pound tent, if you've got a dog snagging, and ripping a hole in your tent, you would cry. <laughs> 200 pounds? <laughs> you'll be mad for about 10 minutes and then you'll get over it. Get out. See, see what I mean? It's a kind of, lie down, plats, plats. Thank you, stay there. It's got a bit saggy now because temperature changes overnight and during the morning tend to make, and I didn't check it last when I got out at four. Lie down, Stella. That's a decent tent. It'll certainly put up with the wind. And that helped us last night. A great big bank around us. That's why I choose this spot always. It's great shelter. So we heard the wind coming over and it was catching the tent on the top, but not much else. And as I say, no condensation. So that was good. And all this ground is damp, very damp. I forgot to put my ground sheet that I did bring. I brought it in a separate ground sheet for it and I forgot to put it in. Lie down, you two. Plats. I don't want them in and out. Plats. Thank you. Lie down. Sorry, you're getting a terrible angle there. Right, I'm going to have to start bagging up. It's getting late. Half past nine. We've been taking it slow. The tent was packed away a long time ago. Haven't seen anyone since that uh, wild camper left. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? 
leave no trace, obviously. And that's where we would pitch. And it is a beautiful spot because you've got this bank protecting you from the wind. So if anyone comes up here, use it. But again, as I say, I know it's not my spot and nothing to do with me, but please don't leave no rubbish because it all comes back to me and others that use this spot. And uh, if you tuck it away in a rock or something like that, it'll be found or it'll get loose and it'll start blowing. So please don't. I know most of you, I don't need to say this, most of you are really responsible, but it has to be said because we've got to keep this land good for generations to come. So, plan of today is go down Fairbrook. I'm going to get some water for me, dogs are top up. Go all the way down Fairbrook, cross the dodgy road, get over to the woodland and try and get up, is it Clover Clough or something? Where the shooting cabin is and have lunch there. And that'd be brilliant. And then in the afternoon, I hike across the moors and uh, to where I want to pitch, find some water further along for the night. But beautiful spot, beautiful place. And as I say, all I saw was that fell runner, except for the wild camper that was pitched just around the corner there. You couldn't make it up, could you? The whole place. The funny thing, the bit that does, does surprise me is he must have come in really quiet last night because the dogs did not pick him pick him up at all. And he was only about two, three hundred yards away. As soon as he got up though, this morning, they started growling. So I don't know how he got in last night. <laughs> maybe the wind was making too much noise or maybe they were too tired. I didn't hear him. I don't know, weird one. Anyway, we're moving out in two, three minutes. I've got to load dogs up. Stella's hardly carrying anything. She's just carrying the bags. I've checked her because I was worried because she's put on a bit of weight and her pack, her harness there might be a bit tight on her, but I was checking her last night. It's basically for Rebel Libra alone. And uh, checked her for sores and all that, and she's fine. Gave her half an aspirin last night because she's been stiff last couple of days and you're allowed to give aspirin to dogs. I checked with the vet. People say, you can't, you can't, you can't. I checked with the vet and I had it sorted. You can give aspirin to a dogs if you only give it, Rebel, leave her alone. You can give aspirin to a dogs if it's only for one or two days, short periods, not on a kind of constant basis. So I found that's the only thing that works with her. The actual dog drugs I've got at home for, for joints, they seem to make her sick. So I'm not bothering that. I'm gonna make her vomit. Anyway, too rich for a tummy. Right, we're moving out. Hopefully my pack is a bit lighter. Should be about 31, probably about 31 pounds. So yeah, a bit late, but as I say, I don't know if you're getting any of this again because we've got a breeze again. Um, I got the tent straight down. That was easy going. And then once that's down, whew, I just took my time because, Rep, stop, leave. She's eating rabbit poo, I'll kill her. <laughs> um, then we're just hikers or just people enjoying the day so no one can complain. They might guess, but they can't prove it, can they? So once you're over on bleak clay, as I say, I haven't seen anyone except for that wild camp, so I've been up the top there taking photos and having a look around. There's no one around at all. Right, we're moving out. See you in a bit. Been up sailing down the side there. I don't know if it looks much. Good fun with a pack on it, huh? Oh, people, first people I've seen, and that's where we're going down the side here. So beautiful. Just come down here, pretty steep. Done it a few times, so not too bad. Oh, I've got some more walkers. Just topped up on a load of water. You've got to rehydrate. Keep skipping it, you'll miss it. And before you know it, you'll be dehydrated. It's about 13, 14 degrees, it feels beautiful. So that's where we've come down from, right at the top there. And we were pitched right at the top over there. So we've had to come round and then down, and we're following this track down now. Then, We'll go right down and down and down. I don't know if you can see the road in the distance. Dead centre. No cars on it. No, sorry. But anyway, 
and then right over that moorland to the left over the top right in the far distance we're going over the top of that but we'll have lunch somewhere see them trees there's a clough near them trees behind them trees with a shooting cabin and that's where we'll be having lunch everything brown I've seen a couple of people but not many about dogs are happy and it's warm what more could you ask <laughs> getting hotter and we're getting down slowly I'm gonna to have to get a weather update because it's only supposed to be about 13 14 degrees but it seems to be warming up right not long there with a tree <laughs> Talk about impatient dog. Rebel, do you want a drink? Come on. I have to talk to him like a baby. <laughs> Don't pick the steepest still, that's it, good girl. And then we go up a trail on the side here, over the top there, and then we're looking for a bridge. Where they're going, I don't know. Here you two. And the snake in. It's just up there. Fair shot nowadays. Not because of the COVID, I mean, I think it's shut down. Right, we've got to make to the gate up there and walk along a bit of road. Dangerous. Yep, she's found a tennis ball. <laughs> she went over into the woods over there and found a tennis ball. How does she do it? Everywhere she goes, we're in the middle of nowhere. Well, unless someone's thrown it out of a car or someone played with a dog and lost it. How does she find a ball? Unbelievable girl. Well, we've done it. We've got across the road from Snake Inn. And we go up here. You can go two ways. That one takes you, I believe, to Birchin Clough Car Park. This way we go round and it swings round and it goes up and by a clough and to Oyster Clough. That's it. And where the shooting cabin is. Oh, shake it. Pumped. It's warm. Dog's happy. In the trees we go. Oh, nice and shady. I honestly expected the area to be packed because I'm probably bouncing around. I do apologise. <laughs> honestly expected the, the area to pack. People would be out in the hordes, but they're not. even though you're allowed to go out. <laughs> Unless they've all gone to the beach again. And I bet when I get home, I'll say the beaches were packed. <sighs> Getting old. <laughs> Doing well. Half past 11. Plan for it. Taking breathers. <laughs> Not drinking half as much water I should be. I will in a bit. Again, I didn't think it'd be as hot as today. Was supposed to be the cool of the two, and it's supposed to be kind of clouding over. <laughs> I don't see the weather. Don't know that. That's where we're going up. Don't know if you can see right there. We will get up there in the end and around. So it's going to be a slog. But it does do switchbacks, so it's not too bad. So we come up that track. 
it splits into two down the bottom there. One goes to Birch and Clough, and this one comes up to Alport Moor, the start of Alport Moor as such. I don't know if you can see that. We follow along this trail that follows along this woodland, and then when we get to the end, it curves round, and that's Oyster Clough. And then later, we'll be over the top of the moorland, across Alport Moor itself. Ooh, had to get the dogs through there. They put these um, dog things, but they don't allow for packs. <laughs> so you have to take the packs off, repack them. Oh, it's a pain. Anyway, pushing on. We came from round and up. I should have took the higher one. Ooh, out of breath. Beautiful, eh? And shoot his cabin. Can I zoom in? Dead center, just below the horizon. <laughs> Stella, Rebel, get here. Can't go down there. I'm picking you up over there. Well, we made it to the shooter's cabin. It's all clean and tidy inside. Fed dogs after they had a little rest. Just waiting for the bubbles to dry up. Leave it, Stella. There's plenty of water here. Beautiful. Not a soul about. Where everyone's gone. In, a, in about an hour's time, we'll go round and follow the track up to the moor, and then we'll take a beeline for the trig point. And then from there, it's to uh, I see it, the marsh in the base of Heron Clough. Beautiful. I'm going to check temperature in a minute and find out what the temperature is because it's warm. Rebel leave. Don't know what it was. Sheep poo. I'm always telling them off, and I <laughs> never listen to me. You enjoying yourself? Oh, you're on wide angle, so you're making it's making it look weird. Stella needs to lose a bit more weight. Don't you, Stella? You've been fed. Lie down. Rest, Stella. I try and get my dogs to rest. Will they rest? No, we're not going out for more hiking. We're having a rest. You're worse than him. So, chicken tikka. Sorry, remains here. Got my rubbish bag there. It's nice, isn't it? Certainly do for a shelter if it was really, really bad out. I think it's what the shooters use. And hence why it's called the shooter's cabin. <laughs> Might be a giveaway, mightn't it? Rebel, get in. In and lie down. In and lie down. Go on. I have to make some rest. Go and lie down. Rebel. In. In there. Plats. Slave drivers. So, welcome to my world. Coffee's too hot. Chocolate bars are just ready. And view out there. Oh, I don't know if you can see. That's my view outside. My view to my left. And blue skies. Unbelievable. Right. It's chalky time. Yum, yum, yum. Yep, I've done it again. Another scorching day. Close to 20 degrees. Creeps up and then just drops down a little bit. But 13 or 14 predicted. Take it out of the wind, look, and that's what I'm saying. When we were coming down the slopes, the heat was, uh, the sun was baking on us, you know what I mean? Look at that, and that's what's happening, and that's why we're feeling hot. And they weren't predicting this, look at that. Take, come out of the breeze, and it's just creeping out and creeping out. 
I didn't think it was that hot, but I'm not surprised, I've got to be honest. Not bad at all. Just had a walker come up. He's looking fair homes, he said. I was like, trying to figure out what he's saying about fair homes. And then when I was talking to him about a farm and all that, he's trying to get to Alport with castles, which is right round this clough. He's come too high. He's come all the way up here when he should have stayed along the plantation along. But anyway, so I've helped him out. So what I thought I'd do, uh, dogs want to go, but I don't. I'm not. I'm letting them rest. I thought I'd show you the pack while they're in the way. Get out of the way, you two. Osprey Rook, 65. It's got the mesh. I'm trying to get it out so I don't block the sunlight. Got the basic mesh back uh, back panel. Um, I don't know what the fabric is. It's just, again, it's a basic fabric. But what I do like about it is on this pack, you can pull that out and adjust it, the rear panel, so it'll fit your back better. And it has worked with me. I don't know if you're getting all this. And then you've got side straps, of course, and uh, side pockets. But what you haven't got, you have not got no mesh panel on the back. I don't know if the sunlight's in there. Which doesn't bother me. But again, a good thing about this pack is you've got rear straps. And they're thick ones, not them flimsy ones you get in some of the packs. These are steady ones. So you could easily get a mat in there or even your tent. Or if your uh, fly sheet is wet put it in a bit of mesh and put it in the back there make sure it doesn't fall off um top pocket pretty low down so things do tend to drop out but it's a, sta a good size inside you've got the normal draw cord and the cinch strap but it's just you get you have got two panels as such you've got a lot of divider which you can unclip and just let everything go straight down i find that easier i'm not a fan of top pockets as you know um, so why did I get it? Well, one, because I always give Osprey a hard time. So I say the pack squeak. This one doesn't squeak. And the other one is, I just never could get one to fit me. So I thought, summer's coming. I might need the mesh, you know, to go for better ventilation. So I'll give it a go. And what, they go for about 90 to 100 pounds. But this one was on Flea Bay, brand new, with the tags, for 60 quid. So I thought... I'll give it a go and if I don't like I'll just sell it on but I've got to be honest I do like it I take my uh, uh, personal beacon whatever you like to call it a locator beacon I, it's standard practice I want to get into the practice of always having that on my pack so it doesn't matter I mean you fall down a cloth here what's the point of having that at home you know and saying well I've got one at home but I didn't think I'd need it so if you've got one and you pay all that money then uh, have it. It sits on, the, going back to the pack, it sits on your back fine. I've had no sores, no no problems. The hip belt, it's just standard. It's not like the Atmos or anything. It's not supported and kind of, it's, they, I hated it. The, the Atmos used to go kind of spring loaded or something. Oh, it's a pain to get back on your waist. I've heard people, you say you can reform them so and so on, but I've never had to do that. I've got to adjust that, that's slipped. Um, the MIT, I'm trying to rest them. It's 20 degrees of heat. It's the first time they've been out this year and they're larking about. <laughs> Can't even talk to you. Um, so, marks out of 10 so far. For, for the money you're paying, you know, even if you get it on the high street at 90 quid, it's brilliant. I think the Atmos goes, what? Well, I'm guessing close to 200, 160, 170, I'm just guessing. Um, the packs I normally use now and have been getting ready for this year are the Crux packs. They're like mountaineering packs, but they're very lightweight. Whereas this one still works out about, I think it's 3.6 or 3.5 pounds, something like that. I'll double check on that and I might put the notes below if, I'm, if it's wrong. Um, so yeah, it, it's heavier than what I would normally use, but the crux packs don't have the mesh, so they're, they're flush to the back, sit better on your back. But obviously when it's warm and or getting hot, you're going to sweat more and then you're going to get cold back syndrome. But I thought I'd give it a try and I was expecting to kind of go, oh, what another, uh, another Osprey pack that I don't fit me. But uh, it's 
to pets. <laughs> How can the basic, cheap, standard, everyday pet work better than the Atmos, Stratos and all the others I've had? Really weird. How long it lasts, I don't know because of the fabric. It's just, I don't know what it is. It's like the old satchels used to have. It's like, <laughs> Rebel, where are you going? I can't watch you if I turn my back. But I do like this adjuster for the back. So if it don't fit you, you just pull it out and try lower down or try higher, higher up. And that is so much easier than the other ones used to have like a slide thing and I could never get it right. This, I just put it to the second one. I saw someone the same height as me and more or less the same size as me, use these, and he put it the second one. So I thought, when I got it, I put it straight to the second one, put it on the back, boom, fit it straight away. So that was a bit of luck. <laughs> And it does come with a rain cover in the bottom pocket. There's a real lower down pocket down here somewhere there. I don't know if you can see it. And it's got a rain cover, whereas normally the Atmos, um, Osprey packs don't. The Atmos don't. I know for that for a fact. And they cost about 16, 17 quid, I'm guessing. So it's nice to have a, a rain cover. I sold my uh, Gregory Optic. Because I say, I'm going back onto the Crocs. I've had them in the past many, many years ago and I like them. I like packs that sit higher up on your back and don't sit on your hips. And it doesn't matter how much cinching you can do with some packs and how much adjusting, they still tend to sag some of them. So, and that makes your, when you're trekking across moorland and uh, going upside of mountains or over mountains or, you know, any, anything that's up and down, the last thing you want is a pack that don't fit you right or you're just struggling all the time. It makes your hiking so much harder. If that sits to your back and you're happy, then you can get on with what you're looking at, where you're planning to go and uh, not be stressing out inside your head. You know what I mean? Going, oh God, this pack's what is a tire. It's amazing. I, I was carrying 35 pounds, didn't feel it. I mean, obviously, you're going to have some weight there, but I'm, sensi I'm saying that it didn't feel it on the shoulders, didn't sense it on the hips, uh, the chest strap felt good. I mean, that's another thing. Normally, the chest straps are not in the right spot. You can adjust them. You've got little um, loop things. You pull it out, and then you can put it in this one. It says basic and standard, but sometimes the basic and standard stuff is the best thing when you're hiking. You don't want to be faffing about with clips and buckles and all that. I'm looking at that one, looks like the stitching's coming under. Yeah. But the good thing with Osprey is if you send it, uh, get in touch with them. I've had it in the past when some stitching came out on their buckle, on one of the hip buckles. And within 24 hours, they sent me another piece. So I've got nothing but praise for the company. It was just, the packs just didn't work with me. Uh, it's not them, it's me. <laughs> I've got an awkward back as well. But, uh, Yep, for 60, 65 pound, I can't remember what it was, 60, I think with the postage. Brilliant, I'm not gonna complain about that. I'm brand new, as I say, when I got it. So, 10 to I was happy with. Sleeping bag, I was more than happy with, nice and toasty. And this pack, and as I say, this pack was just for me to try out, test it, and I thought I'd move it on, so I'm quite surprised. It was a nice bonus, that was. All right, as you can hear and see, I've been trying to get these rest. They can rest in there where it's shady, but will they rest in there? Rebel, thank you. <laughs> what they're doing, you see, people think, oh, they just play. What they're doing, they're trying to get on my nerves because she's staring in there at the packs. That's what she's staring at. And he's just trying to get on my nerves because he knows that if I get some my nerves enough, I'll put the pack on his back and we'll start off. So it's a, they're using a game of tactics here. So we better push on because I was trying to, look, it's 25 past now. I was trying to make it to half past so they have a good hour. But uh, ain't going to do it. It was so-and-so's. So, yeah, pack. If you're looking for a basic cheap, uh, there is, this one's called the, the Osprey Rook and there is a female version called the Wren. So if you're looking for a cheap standard pack that even if you it doesn't fit or you're not happy with, give it a go because for that kind of money if you find one on ebay even cheaper brilliant and uh, you're not wasting like 170 or 200 pound on a pack it's a stupid isn't it
Right, I'm going to bag these up and move them on. Look at her. She's 11 years old, and look at her. Overweight. That'll go all come off. I've been cutting her food down, cutting her food down, but she's still putting her weight. Because I haven't been doing anything. We're doing eight or nine miles over flat ground. Flat ground's no good for a dog. It's not, it's not burning them out. Especially this breed. Right, that's yapping. I'm just trying to drag out the time so they have a rest. <laughs> but it's not working, is it? So we'll be pushing on. We'll be going round here, picking a path out which trails up onto the moor. And then I've got to make, uh, kind of take a, a, a a beacon or locates a marker, land marker where I know where the trig point will be roughly in line with and then aim for that. The aim of the game is not to go down too much because you're going to have to go back up and the moorland if you, is full of like little hollows and you'll be doing that all day so try and stay on the higher ground and try and make a trek along the higher ground and then we'll come to uh, what's it called <sighs> grains in the water or whatever and the swamp and the base of Hearn Clough and then I'll decide where I'm going to get water for tonight and then I'm going to push on to the far end of Bleak Low which is a straight up at the top right and we've got plenty of time we've got a good four or five hours today so a nice steady trek now this was the hardest bit going down from Kinder and then going back up and then this bit was nice coming along here but it went off hot that's two people that have been lost today. I mean, at least he knew. He came up to me and he, he knew he was lost. And he was all, he was a bit flustered, oh, bless him. First thing to do is just calm down, don't fluster. If you, he's more stressed out, I think, that he's made the mistake. But uh, the one last night, he could have made a big mistake. He was coming down towards Hayfield and he was looking for Glossop. And... Uh, if we'd gone to Hayfield, it would have been a good taxi fare round to Glossett. Or hell of a lot of walking back up, up William Clough or something like that. So thankfully, I stopped him in time. But he, he came up to me and asked, and that's a good thing if you lost ask. No harm in the pride there. Right. We're going, we're moving on. Rebel, leave it. <laughs> They're pacing up and down these two, look at them. Right, we'll go. Look at that, see what I mean? She is looking at her pack. Oh, now she's looking at a table, but she has been looking at her pack. 